The Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BSF Canada and Invigor Hybrid Canola. Brittany Warner here with realagriculture.com bringing you another canola school episode uh, joined today by Jaden Woodsboro. He is the agronomy lead for GMAX. How's it going today, Jaden? Good, how are you? Good, thanks. Uh, we've talked previously about swath versus straight cut and swath timing. We're switching gears for this episode, talking about ligus bugs and diamond back moths. Uh, first and foremost, um, what are you seeing so far, at least throughout the region that you're responsible for, as far as levels go for these types of insects? Yeah, so um, ligus bug populations across the region that I'm, I'm working in is, is pretty low. Um, well, I guess is not uh, something that typically affects us here. I know some of the northern areas um, can get higher levels, but we haven't seen high levels of ligus this year. And diamondbacks, um, they have kind of come late this season um, and they're very sporadic. So we've got pockets of, you know, even individual fields where the, they are significantly over threshold and we're seeing some growers spray. And then there's other areas where it's, it's tough to find them. So. Right. And now when is the canola plant most susceptible to these bugs? Yeah, so with lagus bugs, um, the most susceptible time is late flower to early potting. Um, lagus bugs are a piercing sucking insect. So as that canola plant starts to get a firmer pod, um, those lagus can't penetrate the pod and they can't suck those juices out. So um, late flower to early potting is, is the most susceptible time um, for lagus. And then for diamondbacks, um, it's kind of any time after potting, um, right up till close to harvest. Um, we will generally see them move in a little closer to harvest because they they chew any green material. So when that canola plant still has big green leaves that the that the diamondbacks can chew on, uh, they tend to do that before moving up to the pods. So likely for producers to go out during that time um, of staging to scout for these insects. What are they looking for as far as damage, or how does one assess if they have an issue? Yeah. So um, with lagus bugs. Uh, one of the best ways to tell if you've got a significant population is if you walk into that canola crop and you come out and you feel sticky. Um, the lagus bugs, as they're sucking those juices out, it kind of leaves a sap and, and that gets on you when you're walking through the crop. So to look for levels, you should be looking for levels even if you're not feeling that stickiness. And um, so you, you just use a normal sweep net and um, the, th the economic threshold that we're looking at for lagus bugs is 20 to 30 per 10 sweeps. Um, and then something else to consider when we're, when we're talking about lagus bugs is making sure that we're only counting the fourth and fifth instar and the adult uh, lagus bugs because the younger ones aren't doing significant damage. And so the best way to tell the difference is um, once they start uh, growing wing pads on their backs, that's when they're old enough that they're really doing damage to that canola. Okay, and what about for diamondbacks? What are we looking for as far as damage? Yeah, for diamondbacks, uh, we're looking for chewing damage. So you'll just see um, chewing on the pods. Sometimes you'll see a hole in the pod. And then when you break open that pod, all the seeds have been chewed out, but the outside looks like it's still there. So, um, and you can see them crawling around when they get really bad. But um, when you're going out and scouting for them, so you're looking at uh, 20 to 30 per square foot. So the best way to tell this is to pull all of the plants from a square foot bring them back to the hood of your truck or bring a piece of cardboard into the field with you and bang those canola plants out on the hood of the truck and then all of the diamondbacks will fall off and you can count them easily that way. Okay, awesome. And now, you know, in the case, unfortunately, if you find that you do have a problem with either, what are the options to combat either one of these insects? Yeah, so um, for lagus, uh, your options are, are restricted to uh, Matador and Desis. They're ca contact products. Um, so water volume is key when you're going after those insects uh, with those products. And then um, with the Diamondbacks, uh, you, have a, you have one more option that, uh, that is becoming more and more common. So you can use uh, Matador and you can use Desis, um, but Corrigin is one that's becoming more popular because it is um, a systemic insecticide. So it gets into the plant and 
the, the insect has to chew on the plant in order to kill it. So uh, Corgin is, is a very safe product for humans to handle, but it's also safe in the fact that it's not killing all your beneficials. It's only killing um, insects that are chewing on the plant. Um, the other nice thing about Corrigin is that depending on the rate that you, you use, you can get upwards of two weeks of residual control. Um, so we have seen in the past where you go out and spray some of these insects and then in a week the insects are back and um, there's nothing more frustrating than having to go back in and spray the same product or a different one even, but just having to go back in for the same problem that you were just in there a week ago to deal with. So that's one of the nice, nice benefits of Corrigin. Awesome, great, thanks so much for joining us again, Jaden. Yes, thank you.